energy. It's generated, consumed and expelled, and our cities have a constant appetite for it. How can that kind of consumption of power and fuel ever be sustainable? A sustainable city is a city that can keep going and survive for decades and centuries. A city which really works well and in which different flows, flows of material, flows of goods, work well. And in which immigration and emigration is sustainable too. The sustainable city isn't interrupted. On the contrary, it carries on and gets better and better. Skylines and skyscrapers that are built to impress consume an impressive amount of energy. If we're looking at mega cities developing and developing in a sustainable way, um, that's, that's quite a challenge today because, you know, we are developing these cities using fossil fuels. So there's an enormous amount of embodied energy in these buildings that we see around us. Singapore is one of the many world cities facing the challenge of cutting its carbon footprint. The first step is to cut energy use, to do more with less. This housing development is a testbed for new ideas. The buildings face towards the wind and away from the sun, natural ventilation is favoured over air conditioning, and rooftops carry tiles to collect rainwater and protect against the sun. And on this particular block, Plants are tested to see how they can help insulate against the heat. One of the benefits that we get from this kind of greenery is it helps to reduce the ambient temperature by as much as 2 degrees Celsius. And even on the surface of the roof itself, as compared to the concrete surfaces, it can reduce the surface temperature by as much as 15 degrees Celsius. This way, at, at the end of the day, helps to cool the living environment for the residents in our precinct. Energy efficiency can bring significant savings, but the energy still has to come from somewhere. What kind of potential is there for solar in a city like Singapore? It's quite simple to produce 15% of the energy in Singapore from solar, and I think that in the middle and long term, one would be able to produce about 30% from solar here in Singapore. We couldn't produce either 100% or even 50% because there isn't enough land. Solar is still in its infancy in most cities. One of the reasons is that without state subsidies, photovoltaics are more expensive than fossil fuels. At this research lab, scientists work on efficiency to try to overcome that obstacle. Today we have solar modules produced in industry that are around 20% efficient, so 20% of the light is transformed into electricity. Of course, it's possible to upgrade this by a few percent with the silicon technology of today. It's unrealistic to imagine any city relying on renewable energy anytime soon. So some are promoting carbon offsets clean energy projects in order to compensate for greenhouse gas emissions. But it's not always an easy sell. My personal feeling here for Singapore is that we still need to do an awful lot of education and raise awareness. And that happens through um, a whole multitude of activities. I think there's a misconception amongst businesses that implementing a carbon management program is going to cost a lot of money, and it doesn't. It actually saves money. The world's cities are growing, and with it, their demand for energy. Nowhere is that more apparent than in Asia. Here, developing clean energy has become a fresh focus of attention. In the years ahead, within a five or six hour flight of Singapore, more than a billion people will live in cities which still don't exist yet. We have to make sure that these cities are being planned sustainably and that the cities that exist today are rebuilt to be sustainable in the long term. Gazing across a modern city, it's clear that the enigma of sustainable growth and clean energy is a significant problem that's far from being solved.